Hello, I'm uh, Sharona Pratam. I'm Business Development Director for Crossrider. And it's great to follow Amazon because it exactly goes into what I wanted to talk about. Um, basically, Crossrider is a publicly listed company here on the London Stock Exchange. Uh, we have 5 million users around the world and around seven locations uh, worldwide. And what we do is we provide consumers with cyber protection online. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is exactly the opposite of what my predecessor talked about, is how you protect yourself online and what are the threats that we have online for us as consumers, especially as companies like Amazon rise and uh, we have more and more devices like that around. Usually, when we talk about cyber, we think about companies and attacks against companies. And rightfully so, in the last year, there have been heightened attacks against companies in every avenue of life. We've seen um, companies trying to hijack um, Khalisi's future for money, um, and we've seen uh, what appears to be Russian hackers attacking our energy systems here in Europe just to make sure that when they want to switch off the light, they can do that. Um, and recently we had one of the largest consumer data attacks in the history of the US, the attacks of uh, Privax, a consumer uh, data company, where 140 million, dollar, uh, 140 million people's data was hijacked, 40 million of them from here in the UK with MasterCard details, um, uh, addresses, um, and date of birth and social security data. What this all means, now we're used to, I don't know if you remember 10 years ago when you would hear about cyber attacks, you would hear about people trying to hijack the CIA or a hacker getting into the FBI system. These days, we see most of the attacks are there to get our consumer data. That's what they're trying to do. They're doing it through companies, but they're after us. And there are many, many companies rising to protect um, companies in that aspect. Only in Israel last year, there are around 100 companies in the cyberspace with over hundreds of millions of dollars of investment there to do uh, sophisticated, and I think we heard them here as well, to do sophisticated data analysis, to do cloud protection, um, to do uh, uh, firewall protection. But there are many threats that are directly at us, not through companies. And what are these threats and how do we fight them? That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So there's a couple of threats. One is really, um, there's a, a couple of areas we're exposed to. One is on our computers, on the cloud, obviously, where we have all our pictures and all our documents. Other is personal data. I think everybody of us here have all our bank account details, all our addresses, um, all our passwords on our devices. But the third area, which I think people play down, but basically there's a lot of thoughts around that, is the behavioral information. And I wanted to talk a bit, delve into those threats a bit more. So, well, exactly what Amazon was speaking about, people are starting to buy Echo and Nest and put um, devices that can listen to us and we can listen to them and take photos of us into our homes and on our watches um, and we, when we go to bed and when, when we wake up. Now, this is great when you want to um, we, when you want somebody con to control your fridge from afar. But there are some threats. All these devices are connected to Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is pretty easy to hack. And um, a couple of months ago, we've done an experiment. We had a hacker hack into a smart home, and he was able to understand from the data when is somebody coming home. He was able to control the cameras. He can know when you're going to the bathroom and when you're going to bed. I think if any of you had somebody following you around it with a camera, you would probably call the police. And at the moment, this is an option for every one of you who has these kinds of devices. We have political use of information. Now, we can talk about China and go far away where uh, 
consumers can't access any uh, social networks that they don't control. We can talk about Russia, where basically there's no internet. There is an intranet, where the, the government controls exactly what news people uh, listen to. But we can go a bit closer to the largest democracy, and that's the US. Just two weeks ago, there was a court decision in the US where they ordered a website that organized a demonstration against Trump to provide the information of every user that visited the website. Now that's a very scary thought because that's one website that went to court to fight that decision. But think about the hundreds of other websites that don't have the firepower or the, um, um, uh, or the money to go to court and fight the government's request. And this is in the US where we're the land of the free. The third aspect which I urge you to think about is the commercial use of information. Now, we're used to looking for a, an, an expensive vacation in Barbados and that following us in the next six months, even though as it rains in London, we're still getting sunny sunshine commercials about that. And we're fine with that because somebody's following us, we know that. But do you know that if you use an iPhone, you might be getting a higher price for every purchase than if you're on Android. If you're using an IP address from Chelsea, you might be getting an offer which is higher than if you're getting an offer in Manchester. There is a price to pay for this information. And today, a lot of the amazing technology that Amazon is using and other companies are using is actually used to take more money out of us for the same service just because they know what our situation is. So that's something that I think each and every one of us needs to consider. Now, these are different aspects of the problem, but there's one area where it's like you, where you're the most exposed, and that's when you connect to public Wi-Fi. Connecting to private Wi-Fi is basically like walking around naked. I don't know how many of you are connected here to the Wi-Fi network of the conference, but a beginner hacker can learn in less than 10 minutes how to hack a public Wi-Fi in any Starbucks. And what he can see there is exactly who you're texting and what you're telling him. He can see exactly what website you're on. And if you're doing any purchase, he can even go, let, go out and see your credit card information. <laughs> We're almost there. Um, so this is, and most of us, there's more and more proliferations of Wi-Fi hotspots. Now, who's protecting us? Basically, we understand now that the government or doesn't have the ability to protect us because it can't protect its own information, or it doesn't have the willingness to protect us because they have their own interest in terms of knowing what we are doing in any given time. So it's up to us to take the right measures to do that. And today, a lot of the technologies that were available to companies are starting to be available for consumers. And that's where we focus. So there's different aspects, and I won't go into them because uh, we don't have enough time, but there's cloud encryption. If you want to protect yourself on Wi-Fi, there's a very simple now VPN which can protect you. Um, you can do PGP email, et cetera, et cetera. I think what I wanted to finish with is that today there are hundreds of places where you can share information with between one to 10 million people in one second. What I'm saying is that I want the freedom to also decide who will see that information and to protect the information that I want um, that, and to protect the information that I don't want everybody else to know. So thank you very much. <laughs>